This video is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, all photos have been found in the public domain and are fair use and fair dealing. Hello, it's the 27th of July here. It's Saturday here in the UK. And I thought I would bring you a rather interesting video today. So I want to discuss with you some news articles that have been published over the last couple of days that are quite concerning to me because they kind of give a glimpse into what's happening with regards to the relationship and how the royal family are dealing with it. The first article is totally bonkers and it's so ridiculous and ludicrous that I was actually stunned when I read it. A few papers have published a story in which the Windsor residents have been presented with a set of do's and don'ts regarding interacting with Harry and Meghan. Don't approach or instigate a conversation if you see them. Do say good morning or some other pleasantry if you do speak to them. Don't pet or stroke their dogs even if they come over to you. Don't offer to walk their dogs. Don't ask to see Archie or to offer to babysit. Don't post anything through their letterbox. I'm serious. This is actually what the residents of Windsor have been given. I believe it was in February before they moved in. How important do these two think they are, actually? Are we, the people, so disgusting that we are not fit to be interacted with? One local said, it would be funny if it wasn't so over the top. So why did it happen? Who ordered these rules? I find the letterbox one particularly interesting as nobody can actually get anywhere near Frogmore Cottage. It's like Fort Knox. Apparently, annoyed neighbours ordered not to talk to Harry and Meghan. Even the Queen doesn't demand this. Another neighbour commented, It's extraordinary. We never heard anything like it. Everyone who lives on the estate works for the royals and knows exactly how to behave respectfully. Around 400 people live in the private home park and Great Park area of Windsor, which is run by the Crown Estate. So do Harry and Meghan think they're better than the Queen? The Queen always chats to neighbours and even has tea with people on the estate. and She's very friendly with them. This insane need for privacy is going a little too far in my honest opinion. What makes them so special? Harry isn't in line to be king. Do William and Kate have this demand for privacy at their home? Or is this, as I suspect, a ruse to once again instill that narrative to make sure that we think that they are living at Frogmore? More and more people who live in Windsor are coming out and saying that there is no life there. So what's going on? Now, according to some articles, Harry and Meghan didn't know anything about these so-called rules being sent or given to the residents of Windsor and who live in the estate. A spokesman for Buckingham Palace said the Duke and Duchess had no knowledge of this briefing and no involvement in the concept or content. But that doesn't sit right with me. In my opinion, this seems totally their style. These two are so full of self-importance that I believe that it was them that issued these rules without the knowledge of Buckingham Palace. And this comment by Buckingham Palace is to try and clean up yet more mess that surrounds them. It's yet more damage control to try and curb the ever-decreasing popularity of these two. Just like Wimbledon, when she demanded that nobody sat around her, clearing all of those seats and had a little hissy fit when she assumed people were trying to take photos of her, which they weren't. Are their egos so engorged that they think that they are untouchable? What next? Refusing to be touched while on official royal engagements? I will say one thing. I feel so sorry for the Palisades that have to work with these two. Can you imagine the amount of crap that gets dished out to them? The second news article that I'm touching on are reporting that they will be visiting Balmoral for her 
special day. Let's face it, this woman, in my honest opinion, is not 37. All her school friends are over 40 and it's laughable that she's this young. Okay, so reports are stating that one of the reasons they're joining the Queen for her annual trip to Scotland is to treat her and throw her a lavish birthday party. Interestingly, according to some other sources, Amal and George are also planning a huge blowout party for the birthday girl. More pay for play, I suggest. But now stories are coming out saying the Queen will be having a word with Meghan and try and guide her in how to deal with PR and her public opinion. So could this trip to Balmoral be due to the fact that Meghan and Harry have been accused of making a lot of faux pas in the past few months, during which they delayed the announcement of their firstborn, they kept his godparents a secret and have ramped up privacy requests. Such behaviour has antagonised the public and could have damaged their image and may not be repairable. Some of the articles imply that the Queen is doing this to take Meghan under her wing and guide her. And to this I say, no amount of guidance will ever help this woman. She has never and will never heed the advice of others because she has such a huge ego and a grandiose self of importance that in her mind she isn't doing anything wrong. NPD doesn't make you act like a normal human being. NPD being narcissistic personality disorder. Since when has Megan ever listened to anybody? There's been reports stating that she flatly refuses to take advice from senior royals and just charges on regardless. Surely you come to a point when everything you touch turns to absolute garbage that you must start to wonder why. You get to a stage where you have to finally admit that the course you're taking isn't working and something must change in order to improve things. So why doesn't she do this? Could the sense of entitlement, importance and power fantasies be linked to something else? In today's social media hungry and imposing world, it's very clear that self-importance, arrogance and pure need for self-gratification is it's very easy to spot a narcissist. They turn themselves into glittering figures of immense grandeur surrounded by psychologically impending walls. So is Megan increasing her self-importance into her surroundings? We know that it's a classic narcissist trait to believe their own sense of entitlement because they consider themselves special. Narcissists expect favourable treatment as their due. They truly believe that whatever they want, they should get. They also expect the people around them to automatically comply with every single wish or whim. That is their only value. Sound familiar? What Megan wants, Megan gets. Since reality doesn't support their grandiose view of themselves, narcissists tend to live in a fantasy world propped up by distortion, self-deception and magical thinking. They spin self-glorifying fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, attractiveness, the ideal love that makes them feel special and in control. But what happens when control is taken away or they feel threatened? When a narcissist loses control, they start to try and control how others see those around them. They start to tailspin and lash out at others to try and scrap back and scrape and scrap back those strings that have loosened. They do not cope well and will often go into meltdown. Above all else, narcissists believe that they are always right and nothing is ever good enough for them and they will control and coerce those closest to them. The Harry of late has looked miserable and sombre. The only time he really comes alive is when he's at his royal engagements alone. Why do you think that is? A female narcissist 
finds pleasure and joy in taking others down. A malignant female narcissist rarely outgrows her excessive sense of entitlement, lack of empathy and thirst for interpersonal exploitation. She merely adjusts these traits to changing her narrative. A female narcissist is not just vain and self-absorbed, she's also a covert bully who ensnarls fellow female friends, relationships and partners, family members into her toxic web. They are ruthless in their ability to first idealise, then devalue and discard their victims without a second thought, just like her family. So how do you think the situation is going to end? I'm going to be honest and say that I'm fearful for what the future holds for our monarchy. When the Queen passes, will the adoration continue with Charles's reign? Is the respect and devotion of the Queen's subjects powerful enough to stand such turmoil that she could inflict. The Queen is a very powerful force that has been such an inspiration within her reign that I don't think this can ever be the same trust and respect for another monarch until it's William's turn. But one thing I do know is that all is not well within that royal family. And only swift action to curb this cloud that hangs over them will help. So while we may think that the family are doing nothing, I really hope that behind the scenes they'll be working ways out to handle this situation because it could be catastrophic. Well, I hope so anyway. I hope they are doing something because the Queen deserves better than this. So what do you think? What do you think is going on? Is she going up to Balmoral because she's having a huge party? Or is she going there to literally be told off? I don't know. Only time will tell. Let me know what you think. Um, If you've liked this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And once again, I will see you very shortly. Thanks for watching.